All right, let's go ahead and get started. Once again, thanks again for joining our webinar, um, an introduction to Google's server side tag manager. Um, just some quick housekeeping items before we get started um, with, our, with today's content. Uh, this webinar will be recorded and sent out uh, via email after the webinar concludes. Uh, so be on the lookout from uh, an email from AdsWorth. Well, we'll also be posting it to our YouTube channel as well uh, within the next few days. So be on the lookout for that. And you can access that through our website. Um, you can also ask questions in the question box. So um, if you have any questions as we go throughout the content, please feel free to type them in there. We'll also be pausing periodically during different sections to take your questions, uh, again, via the question box. Um, and then at the end, we'll also have a, a Q&A. So feel free to stay on the line and, and ask our content specialists our, uh, your questions. All right, next slide, please, Brian. All right, uh, just a little bit about our agenda today. Um, I wanted to mention that unfortunately, Charles uh, Farina won't be able to join us today due to unforeseen circumstances. Uh, we apologize for that, um, but we have amazing content for you today. We have a great agenda. Um, first, we're gonna jump into an introduction to server-side tag manager. Uh, we'll do a product overview. Uh, we'll do some uh, example case uh, use cases of the product. Uh, then Adam's gonna take us through a product roadmap. Uh, we'll do an interactive tic-tac-toe sec tic -tac section, excuse me, uh, where you'll be able to see SGTM in action. We'll review a client story with Asana and get tips on how to get started with SGTM. And again, we'll do a, a Q&A toward the end. Uh, with that, I'd like to introduce today's uh, presenters. If you could go to the next slide. And uh, oh, yep, there you go, thank you. Uh, we have Brian Anderson. He is our Senior Data Engineering Manager here at AdSwork. Uh, we have Lily Nugent, our Senior Consultant uh, in the Analytics Department. And then Adam Furr, our Global Product Lead at Google. So welcome to all our presenters. And next slide, please. All right, if you're new to AdSwerve, um, welcome. Uh, we usually try to do at least one webinar per month. So be on the lookout for communications from us via our website and social channels for each month's webinars. Um, we are the leading Google Marketing and Analytics Cloud Partner. Uh, we are the number one provider in Google Analytics 360 and advanced analytics projects. Uh, we're a team of 200 plus industry leaders uh, with 50 plus uh, analytics and data scientists on our team. We have over, uh, helped over 450 agencies and 400 brands um, implement the GMP and Google Analytics products. Um, with that, I will go ahead and uh, turn it over to the next slide. Yep. <laughs> um, and introduce Lily, um, who is going to take us through an SGTM overview. Great. Thanks, Marie. Um, Brian, can you go to the next slide? Great. So as the measurement ecosystem changes, server-side GTM is a new tagging solution that really will allow you to own and fully run your first-party data collection. Um, in addition, right, you can also explore a more sustainable first-party um, ID persistence method that is uh, more durable than the current JavaScript cookies that are at the discretion of the browser's expiration. So if we go into the next slide, um, we'll talk through kind of what is server-side GTM. So server-side GTM takes the concept of current web GTM as we know today and brings it directly to the server. So allowing you to run a tag manager container in the cloud. So with server-side GTM, the data is first routed to your own cloud infrastructure, enriched as desired, and then sent to the specific vendor endpoints. Um, and then Brian will touch on that in a little bit as well. Um, so if we go to the next slide, we'll go through a few benefits of server-side GTM. Um, the first one we like to talk through, right, is the privacy and data security. So using a server-side proxy, enables you to modify the outgoing request to vendors so that the only the data that you truly mean to send to them makes it to those platforms. Um, ser Server-side tagging also minimizes any data leakage um, and moving into moving those JavaScript libraries into an own CDN that adds a significant level of security 
as they cannot be accessed through the browser. Um, efficiency in data collection is another benefit of server-side. You're able to take a single event data object created by a client, which is a concept, again, we'll touch in it on in a little bit, um, like GA4, and configure a server-side tag to send that data off to several vendors at the same time that requires the same data. So that means that there's only one or perhaps a handful of kind of necessary requests within the browser itself, and the server does the rest of the work. Um, and of course, the last benefit here and many more is the data ownership. So when you route the data through your own servers, you'll have a complete ownership of the data and enabling the first data or first party data collection. Um, but with server side, there are some challenges that are um, should be taken into consideration. So the first being the resources, right? Um, and development and costs. So it's important to consider the management costs of your cloud infrastructure. Server-side is not a kind of set it and forget it implementation. Um, it will require continual monitoring of the networks and its logs, consolidating all of your data streams, and of course, monitoring your use of the instances to ensure that your setup can actually handle the traffic being sent at any given point. And then costs to running and owning your own cloud instance as well. So the process of the data also incurs a cost and the cost is essentially a fee right, for moving your data out of the cloud um, and into your GCP project every time a request is received in your server or sent to vendors. Um, the other challenge of server-side GTM right now is vendor adoption. So because server-side is still an evolving tagging solution, not all platforms have adapted the capability of a server-side endpoint. Um, therefore, a fully server-side migration, while possible, might be will have a time cost factor. So as you can either wait for vendors to kind of release their own templates or invest your time and costs into developing and maintaining your own custom templates. Um, and then right, what comes with owning your own data collection is the transparency and still respecting user consent. So it's very easy to view service IGTM as a tool to kind of combat these industry changes regarding privacy and compliance. However, you should always ensure that privacy and transparency of your end user's data collection are clearly communicated to them. Um, it's important to also remember that you have to remain compliant and respect your end user's consent for data collection. Um, and then with that challenges, is there any initial questions that we wanted to go through. I know we just covered a lot of information very fast, so happy to take any of those questions right now. Um, otherwise, I think we can go, Brian, to the next slide. Um, cool. Review, yeah. Well, thank you, Lily, for that introduction to everything. So yeah, um, so I want to let the lay of the land here of like what WGTM is versus SGTM. So when you see WGTM and SGTM on these slides, WGTM we refer to as WebGTM. That's the G Google Tag Manager you know today. The one that loads in your browser. It's the one that you know you're putting that JavaScript snippet on your website and it's loading in your browser. And then SGTM, server-side GTM, is what like Lily mentioned, where it's like usually a server that's living in a cloud environment and now you're managing it. Uh, so these are both of them on the screen right here. So on the left, I don't know if you can all see my mouse, but on the left is WebGTM. This is the interface of that. And on the right is server-side GTM. So they look very similar. So in the same kind of design uh, choice that what Google Tag Manager, uh, the web version is, it basically is you know, intended to be like a low code solution. So marketers can just jump in and you know, tag up their website and send things off and get their analytics working. Uh, similar with server-side GTM. It also, there are some custom templates you can write in there, but still it's designed to be an user interface where you actually have uh, just control as being a non-developer and you can configure, you have your same triggers, you have your same tags, all that kind of stuff in there. So it's a familiar interface, but it's a little different at the same time. So we'll kind of go in these differences between between the two. So uh, there is it is a new server type container. So this is unique because it's something that does not load on your browser or your customer's browser. So it's actually a server that lives somewhere. You could have this live in your basement if you wanted to. So you own or rent this server. 
Uh, so whether it's you know versus the Google-owned server. So right now, if you use uh, Google Tag Manager in, on your website or your customer's website, you're basically it's loading from Google's servers, and then you're also sending requests to Google's servers or and other third-party vendor servers for your analytics and marketing. So in this case, you actually own and rent and maintain this server. So this can live on AWS, it can live on Google, uh, Google's cloud, uh, Azure, wherever really. And like I said, even in your basement if you want. So this container, pro the processes are triggered by incoming HTTP requests. So what this server is, it's an extra stop in, the, in, in sending your analytics data or marketing data out to uh, whichever its end destination is. So the container is sitting there just listening, waiting, and you're gonna send these HTTP requests from, your, from a browser or an app and send it right to this server-side uh, GTM container. So then there's also a new cookie uh, that's in here. So it's a first-party HTTP-only client ID cookie that you can set up. So this helps for durability long-term. So you now, with the browser changes that are taking place, you now have this first-party cookie that's HTTP-only and it can only be read by the server. Uh, in here, so it's not to confuse people, like there's a client-side GTM, which we refer to as the web GTM, runs in as a client side is what we say, but there's a new entity that lives server side called the client. And this is what is unique to server side GTM, that there's actually, it claims the request that comes in. So if you send a GA4, so Google Analytics 4 request into server side GTM, you're gonna have a client in there that goes, oh, hey, you look like a GA4 request. I'm gonna claim it. And then from there, you can, you can trigger stuff off, off of that. So the client parses the incoming HTTP request based on path. So path meaning it looks like a GA4 request, it looks like a universal analytics request, it looks like a measurement protocol request. You have these different clients to determine each one of them. Uh, so you can do custom clients. Uh, I actually can possibly show you one today when we go through the demo, but you can make a custom client as well. So if you have any specific thing you wanna send to server side GTM, you can claim that client and then pass it off to some other place. You have options for data enrichment. So because like I mentioned, there's an additional stop now and before it makes it to its end destination, you can add data to your uh, to, to your data. Uh, so if you add data to your data, so before it goes out to the, the endpoint, uh, you can add extra stuff in there. You also can load now web GTM from server-side GTM. So kind of inception level, I suppose, but like you can actually load your web GTM from server-side GTM, so it looks like it's coming from your same domain. Uh, so if, say we have adserve.com, for example, I can load my web GTM from adserve.com instead of it being loaded from a Google server. And then, yeah, the tags in the container just send data to the respective analytics and marketing vendor endpoints. So let's look at the kind of architecture here. So on the left, in web GTM, this is what the typical kind of website looks like. So you have your uh, tag manager web container with your analytics tags, conversion tags, third-party tags, and you can see they're all kind of making the request to their respective endpoints. So analytics tag may go to you know, Google Analytics, conversion tag to Google Ads, third-party tag to third-party analytics, if you have like Facebook, Snapchat, et cetera. All of those now are being requests that are being made from your customer's web browser. So all of those different requests are going out. So in server-side GTM example, you still have some kind of tag management platform uh, or use like just GTAG on there, but you'll have one web tag that can send out just one request now to the, your server-side instance, that client claims it. And from there, there's triggers that happen similar to what you do today on your, your website with uh, standard web GTM then you have these different server tags that will then send off, oh, I trigger, I send off to Google Analytics, to Google Ads, I send to third-party analytics. So what you're doing is you're moving some of the work that typically takes place in the web browser to, to the server. So the server is actually doing a lot of this work. So you can send just one request from your web browser, server side will pick it up, and then it fans this out to and does all the extra work and sends it everywhere else. And so one thing too, get asked a lot. So am I replacing my current web GTM with server-side GTM? No, it's usually not the case. Usually it's a complement to your, your, your measurement rather than actually replacing it. So we don't need to switch from SGTM to, 
to uh, or some to SDTM from client side. They actually kind of work together. So many tags still will run JavaScript in the browser. You're still going to have some data that comes from the browser, or some people you know maybe is like a live chat that pops up that has to inject some JavaScript. So all that stuff runs in the browser still. So you'll still need something to possibly do that. Uh, you also need something to send to server-side GTM. So again, like I mentioned, it's just a server that's sitting there listening. It's waiting. It's waiting for you to send it something. So how are you going to send it there? Well, you can use GTAG library if you want, and you go in and you know write your own code for it. Or the traditional way where you just have a web GTM, you can go in, load your web GTM container, configure it instead to send to Google, send it to your own server, so you can send it to server-side GTM. And then some tags are still, like Lily had mentioned, not supported in server-side GTM at this time. So you still may have a hybrid model where you kind of run half of your tags in web GTM when some what that you can move move them to server-side GTM. Uh, and where you want to put effort, you can write your own custom tags if you want to. Uh, also, what's really cool is you can, like I mentioned, you can load web GTM from server-side GTM. So they really, it's a complement. It's not, not it's something to be completely different. And I guess we covered a lot there. It's like if there's any questions on this, I don't know if we look at some of these now. Brian, I think there was a question where um, do custom clients support posts or does it still um, use Git only? Where is that one? Sorry. Uh, so what was that? If um, Do custom clients support posts or do that still use Git only? Yeah, they can actually. I'm actually, the one that I'm doing today is a post request. So yeah, I'll show you. So it's a measurement protocol uh, request and I'm actually doing a post request. So, and I believe a lot of the requests in general can be post requests if you're doing it in that method. So I'll, the demonstration later, I'll show you that is actually doing that. And it's not even a custom client. It's actually just using the measurement protocol client. But yeah, we'll jump to the next uh, piece here. So some example use cases. So I kind of touched on some of these. But uh, yeah, increased measurement durability. So uh, since it allows you to own the domain of it, your configuration where you send your measurement data. So like it, it literally looks like you're loading everything from your own domain. So this helps for durability for, you know, as the browsers change, as some cookie uh, expiry changes, is this will help you basically send in a first party context. So you're, like, you're communicating with your own, within your own domain. It means the requests are sending to your own domain. Uh, so you can be future ready for current and upcoming browser changes that affect cookies by setting that first party HTTP only cookie. And you can also load WebGTM and then also all the dependencies get loaded as well from your own domain. So to, it just makes everything more durable because everything looks like it's coming from your domain. Uh, you can help potentially increase site speed. So because remember I would mentioned or showed in that kind of architecture that you're now, you have so many different requests that potentially are being sent from, from the web browser on, on your site that all those, any of your customers that go to the, their, your website, all those requests are being made every single time on every single, uh, anytime like a purchase is made, et cetera, you're sending maybe to you know five or more different places. There's five or greater different requests are all going out. Well, you can move that work to server-side GTM. So with so many tags going to so many different vendors, you can reduce the browser, doesn't have to load all those extra scripts. You just let all the work be done server-side so the server can handle that stuff. So take the work off the browser and it can potentially speed up your website. So, and how you do that is basically like I mentioned, you can send one request from a website or app and SGTM will just fan out to all the rest of those vendors. And it can improve uh, performance as less scripts are having to load and run and there's net, less, less network requests. Uh, you can also enrich your data. So this is something too that's uh, just a new addition uh, and possible capability for, for your teams. So server-side GTM allows uh, you to have data to better first-party data analysis and enrichment via integrations across, across cloud and ad tech. So you can see how like you can have uh, right away 
you could have a tag that's on server side sends data directly to BigQuery. So in real near real time, you can have data ready to go and, and, and do your own analysis on it. You can also add first party data. So because you have that extra stop, that's a that's a point where you, in that request that's happening before it goes off to Google Analytics or wherever, you can add additional data to that. So maybe you need to add some kind of key to your data. So then your data offline, like when you're analyzing it later, you can you can join on that key and you can understand more of what's actually occurring. Um, you also can route the basically the, the same data to multiple third parties, et cetera. So you're really in control of this and you can do a number of new things. So pretty cool. Well, uh, next we have Adam up with uh, the SGTM vision and roadmap. Take it away, Adam. All right. Thanks, Brian. Uh, so, so yeah, uh, Lily and Brian gave you a pretty broad, um, in-depth overview of how a server side works and what it's for. Uh, but I wanted to to come and give the the longer term vision, so you can understand how Google is thinking about. Our investment in this space and so this is our vision statement which i'll read quickly so we want server-side gtm to be to provide ubiquitous privacy preserving measurement without compromise and all of these words were chosen for a reason so i'll go through each one starting with ubiquitous um, one of the things that that lily called out is that uh, sgtm today requires additional resources and effort uh, to get it going and so all the benefits that we've talked about come at an additional cost and over time we want to reduce that cost so that anyone who wants to use server-side gtm and get that functionality is able to do so without a significant burden so that's a longer term goal um, and we hope to get there um, but wanted to communicate how we're how we're investing in that area the next is privacy preserving measurement so one of the things that we've highlighted with server-side GTM is that there's a lot more transparency and control over the data. Data comes to you first before it ever goes to a third party. And so you're able to get a better sense of what's actually being collected and where it's going and be able to turn things off uh, or modify things before they, they go anywhere. And so we think that's a critical component to measurement moving forward and we think server-side GTM is one of the key ways to, to support that functionality. And finally, the without compromise, uh, which sounds quite bold, um, but uh, the key point we're trying to make there is that we don't want you to have to sacrifice any key feature functionality uh, by moving some of your tags to server-side GTM. So, if there are particular things you expect from your measurement in Google Analytics or Facebook or some other third party, we want to make sure that that remains uh, at parity with anything you do, you could do with your web tags. Um, and given some of the use cases Brian talked about, you can hopefully even go beyond what what web tags can do as well. And so with that vision in mind, I wanted to walk through some of the more immediate roadmap items. So a few feature launches that have happened this year. Uh, one is Google Ads Enhanced Conversion Support. So if you want to Im implement enhanced conversions, which is the hash PII uh, way of collecting data and using that to enhance or uh, make our measurement more durable. Uh, that can now be done directly in server-side GTM with the server-side Google Ads tag. And similar functionality is coming early next year for floodlights as well. The second is a native integration with Firestore, which is a essentially a very fast database that allows you to, to read data um, and modify the data leaving your server container. So one of the examples that um, Brian walked through, um, you could think of this as like profit margin that you add in your secure container so that no one else can see it and you swap revenue out for profit and send that for Google Ads bidding. Finally, uh, consent modeling. Um, 
if you use consent mode, we want to make sure that you're getting all the best consent modeling we have to offer. Um, and there were some gaps there that we've we've now closed. So that kind of speaks to the without compromise portion of our vision. So looking forward to next year, we have some exciting things on the roadmap. Uh, first is NUI data modification tools. So this will be a new entity within server-side GTM where you can define your business logic and apply it easily to one or many tags at the same time. So an example could be when a, a certain condition is met, I want to remove or truncate IP address and do that for these seven tags and not do it for these other four tags. And so you can do that today in SGTM, but it's a bit more cumbersome. And this will make it so you can do it very easily with all UI based controls. So we're pretty excited about that one. The next is Google Signal support for GA4. So if you were to deploy GA4 via server side GTM today, you wouldn't get Google Signals, which is the key. Uh, underlying functionality that supports audience activation, demographic reporting, cross-device modeling, a lot of the things that make GA4 appealing. And so this is something we'll, we plan to build into to SGTM early next year, and we'll unblock a lot of those key features that people are looking for in GA4. Finally, from an infrastructure perspective, we are moving to Cloud Run, which is a GCP uh, serverless solution. It's much more predictable and scalable. And so when Lily talks about the added cost of sort of having to think about your own infrastructure and managing it properly, Cloud Run is designed to make that easier. You still have to do it, um, but it is much more reliable and predictable. Um, so that will that will help as well. And Finally, we are also building an integration for app. So if you use the Firebase SDK today, uh, we want to offer a similar functionality where instead of sending that data directly to Google, you can just point Firebase to send it to your own server first and then fan it out to various endpoints. So we're hoping to launch that uh, early second half of next year. Um, and if anyone is interested in getting more information on that, um, definitely feel free to reach out to your Google account team. So with that, I'm excited to pass it back to Brian for a fun little exercise that he put together. All right. Yeah, thank you, Adam. Excited for those updates. All right, uh, yeah, this is something kind of out of the box, but tic-tac-toe versus sgtm we're thinking like what can we do to kind of demonstrate server-side gtm and do it in a fun way and this is something you can all participate in as well so this is something that you definitely would really not do but it's fun and it shows off kind of how this works so i'll actually show you this and you can play along but what's happening basically uh we're going to go to a website and we're going to play tic-tac-toe against server-side gtm so there's a measurement protocol request that's actually sent to server-side GTM X, uh, each time you make a move. So when you click on the square, you're gonna see a measurement protocol request go out and it's gonna tell server-side GTM that it's your turn. And we're gonna even do this with cookies. So I don't know if everyone's aware, but every time you, uh, well, as long as it's configured correctly, when you make a request to, your, to the server-side GTM, it'll actually send all the cookies that are set on your domain to there, so you can use them as variables or whichever, uh, if you need to use them as data. So we're gonna play with cookies. So we're getting the state of the board, there's nine squares and tic-tac-toe, and the state of the board is all kept in, in these cookies that I've set up. Uh, so uh, server-side GTM gets all those cookies and it reads through them and looks which, where's an available place to go. And it's kind of not that smart right now, but it just chooses randomly where to select, unless you haven't gone to the middle. So anyways, uh, you can play. Uh, I'll put this in the, I think I can copy this. So there's, I'll put this in the chat, or there, Lily did, thank you. But you can all play. Uh, we're gonna go to showcase.adserve.com. 
And this is what you should see, something along the lines of this. And so it kind of gives an ex explanation to what is SGTM, tic-tac-toe versus SGTM, how does this work? And there's cookies named S0 through S8, so it's zero based. So I mean square zero, one, two, three, et cetera. So this is how we're sending uh, all that. So we're gonna play the game here and you can see the next player. So server side GTM made this choice. And so how I'll show you that that's happening is I'm gonna open up our network request and we can take a look at what's actually taking place. So if I filter here, so if I click this, you can see what's happening. We send out a fetch request to our server side GTM endpoint. So hope this isn't overly technical for most, but you can see here we have our server side GTM endpoint is set up as g.adserve.com. And I'm sending this measurement protocol uh, request and has some values in there. And to the person who asked before, this is a post and I'm actually giving it a payload, which the event is your turn. So I'm telling server side GTM, it's your turn. And then what I've made is a tag that lives on server side that has that will send back a response in the, the body. So it's choosing this, this was number eight. So one, two, three, four, five, or sorry, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you can see it's square eight, so it chose that. So if I play again, and I'm not gonna play smart because it's gonna, I'm just gonna win. Uh, you can see now we sent out another request. Uh, it's this one and it shows three this time. So each time I'm sending a request, it's going to server side GTM and going out there. Um, so what's actually happening? So what we can do is look at server side GTM and there's a preview uh, in this similar to web GTM that you've seen. So if we go back to this, I can choose space and now here you can actually see the request that came in and we can analyze this. So if we click on your turn, so this is what was sent to server side GTM, you have some different different, uh, I guess, just different things you can look at now with server side GTM. So you can see that this is the incoming request. You can see everything as a post request that came in, and then you can see the cookies that came in. So here's that S through S0 through S8, and then the cookie value. So if there's an X, null means that there's no nothing there, and uh, just whether they're an O or an X. Uh, for the cookie. And then you can see how we have the client that claimed it was called measurement protocol client for GE4. So it is this activation path, as I mentioned before, so it can activate. It, it's like, hey, you're a measurement protocol request. I'm going to do something now. I'm going to claim you. So it claims it and then it does even there's an outgoing request too from the server. So going to googleanalytics.com from this. And if you can click on tags, you can see the tags that fire. So here there was a tag that I created called custom tic-tac-toe. And this is what's actually, the, the trigger is on your turn. So when it sees that your turn event, it's gonna trigger, trigger this uh, tic-tac-toe response back. So that's what's happening. Uh, you can, if everyone's aware, you can go into application, you can see the cookies. Uh, as I click the cookies, or as I click the, sorry, the square, you'll see the cookie state changes too. Uh, now everything is full. And then once I click there and I go again, you'll see it's reset back to null. So it's, we're using the cookies to declare the state of the board, and then we're sending it all through, through this. Uh, another thing that's happening on this, uh, on this page is I'll load, let's reload here. And you're going to see GTM JS. So GTM is actually loaded on here too from AdServe or from our server. So I've also configured Web GTM to load on here. So you actually have it loaded. See the request URL is from our server side instance. So it's loading the GTM library right from here. Uh, so that all is being done through our domain. And with that, it's also then sending out the uh, like here, this collect uh, request is actually sending out a page view. So this is all being sent right through our, uh, our adswerve.com uh, server side endpoint. So you can see in debug mode now, there's a page view. So then you can see all the different uh, tags that kind of fire off of this. 
So again, you can see a request coming in, incoming request, have an outgoing request. So you're basically it's that extra stop that's taking place. So you have an incoming request, server-side GTM can analyze it, you can do triggers and have tags, fire, and then you have the outgoing request from the from the server that go to the final destination, like a Google Analytics endpoint. So that's kind of a quick demo of this. Hopefully you all beat server-side GTM uh, or let it win. Um, but yeah. And now on to our customer story with Asana. And there's Vinny. Welcome, Vinny. So we uh, as sort of uh, helped out uh, Asana with uh, the server side implementation. And so we'll, uh, Vinny's here to share Asana's story and uh, how, how they got there and how it went. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, so uh, we started with server side GTM almost, I think, two years ago when just like the initial launch of server side and kind of wanted to just talk about why we decided to go server side and then um, also why we ended up uh, going to ads for it. But we launched uh, our first instance of server side. You know, Facebook just came out with their conversions API and we also just wanted to see what was possible with like the new technology. Like, could we get performance gains? Can we, you know, track better? Can we look at the, you know, server to server type of capabilities? And so I took an online course and yeah, I got like a basic server side up and running on App Engine. And, you know, it's like, oh, it's, it's up and running, doing great. Uh, you know, we, there wasn't a lot available at that time. It was, I think, just like GA4 and, you know, UA. And so then after about a year, I'm like, oh, wow. Like, there's more features coming, you know, kind of like what Adam mentioned, like there's just like continual like exits beta, like, okay, like we can really commit to this now. Uh, so we like, hey, like, can we take advantage of the capabilities just on our own? And the answer is no, like, I'm not a developer. I haven't, you know, set up multiple servers in the past. Like I, you know, there's just not a ton of documentation at that time uh, for someone like myself with, you know, limited deep technical skills. And so, like, hey, Answer, but can we set this up in a way that allows us to maximize the capabilities of, of server side? Like, there's all these new features out there. Like, let's take it, um, let's really commit to it and like maximize all of the different tags and let's build our, you know, multiple servers. Like, let's really achieve if we can get the, the best performance possible. And so then, that's where uh, it's kicked off the process with server management and setup. And then if we go on the next one, um, we started with like a really thorough tag audit uh, and parallel testing to see just because the two will not always necessarily return the same thing. They're going through different pathways and we wanted to nail down uh, is that difference in, you know, if we're looking at page views, is there a difference there because something set up correctly or incorrectly? And then is it, uh, what can we do to like really minimize the variance between the two? And then uh, Adverb is very helpful. They build out the workspaces, they handle all the technical components, which is huge for us. Uh, and it's, you know, allows us to move a lot faster and work on other things. Um, however, like as part of this process, there's a lot of auditing and debugging that's going on. And, and as I mentioned in the lower section, like one of the challenges we run into is as we're making these changes, are we running into issues because we're migrating to server side, or is it because you know there's a standard fare of tagging and tracking challenges that uh, I'm sure all of us run into? So we you know flip the containers live. That part is pretty straightforward. AdSwerp is really helpful on the components of documentation and and making sure we know what we're doing, uh, like you know as we flip things live. However, you know, I think it's a little unavoidable. Like you're dealing with like the base components of our, at least our web tracking. So yeah, we run into some issues where certain things break and unfortunately in ways that like, there's not always like a, you know, there's not a, you can't go back. There's a, so you sometimes have to say, all right, we lost this period of data. Like we're gonna work on moving, you know, collecting it going forward, but as part of that, like we really have to make sure that everyone across the organization is aware that we're making these changes. So communications are really important 
to say, hey, we're making this change on you know, November 9th. Like, let's make sure that if you see anything, let us know. We've tested it extensively, but we want to make sure that if you see something that we missed, like raise the flag and we can either roll it back, we can fix it live. Um, and then, yeah, there's just uh, the other challenge I would say is we're doing server side, you know, you use uh, consent management platforms, you use um, A-B testing platforms, and all these different things don't always play as nicely together as you'd like. And so just figuring out how they fit together can be challenging with new tools. And so sometimes we just bump into those issues and we say, all right, like we're going to try and fix it, or there is limited um, knowledge out there. So we are at that edge and we're going to try and uh, improve it or say, hey guys, like we're actually going to step back and we're going to let the industry catch up for a bit. Uh, and so that's been a, another challenge as you, you know, test out new technology. But overall, it's been you know, really enjoyed uh, bundling features like that's really helpful for performance games. And yeah, that's where it's been a really helpful partner as we've rolled over more and more tags to server side. Well, thank you, Vinny, for that. Now we'll do a quick Q&A with you. Hope I don't surprise you with a question, but what did surprise you about this journey? Yeah, I, I think I saw a question too about it, but like there's some quite like of parallel instances and you're like, oh, like even your first you know, couple of slides about web GTM versus server side. It's like, well, when I first learned about it, it's like, oh, the server side will just kind of replace the web container. And it's like, well, actually, like, no, like we're still running plenty of things in our web container. The server side, uh, for me, has just been helpful to understand, like, it's now handling the processing in a way that uh, used to just hand that off to Google. And, and now we own that component. And so initially you started with that self-provisioned infrastructure. I know like the earlier is on App Engine or it still is, I guess, and Adam just, I guess, told us today it's going to Cloud Run. Um, what, how did that go and what made you like, what made you think you needed more assistance with that infrastructure? Yeah, you know, when I provisioned our first, you know, App Engine server, it's, I think it was one server, um, which, you know, if I'm sending, you know, a specific task tag or there, you know, one to two tags, it's not going to be that big. But if we're trying to run, you know, much of our pings off of a single server, that's just, we're going to see performance degradation across the globe. And so one of the things we needed was like, what can we do to like have multiple servers running uh, globally and provisioning, you know, I don't, perhaps it's possible within that engine, but within Cloud Run is what we've you know, been using or, you know, also examined other types of, um, cloud providers just to see like what's the best infrastructure that supports a global tag management tool. And so, yeah, just App Engine is helpful for us getting up and off the ground and like a proof of concept, but certainly with Cloud Run, we see performance gains that are, you know, just significantly faster page load or not page load, but the server load um, globally. Cool. And then last question, what would you suggest people consider when moving forward with a server-side GTM project? If they're thinking about it, what do they need to consider that maybe you didn't consider right away? Yeah, I think the timing component, like it, it's not a, it's not a quick flip over. Uh, there's definitely, uh, takes a while to understand differences between the data streams, because like I said, one's flowing through you know, web container and the other one flows through server side. So sometimes you'll see differences between the two, even though it looks like, you know, identical data. So I think like that just takes a while to understand. And then with the migration between the two, like there's just, um, there's just certain pieces that can't, as much as you want to go fast, like maybe the actual work might be quick, but the data analysis, the alignment of company goals just takes, takes a while to get everyone on board and also understanding like there are there's risks like I mentioned with um, you know I should change like foundational parts of tag manager like you just uh, you want to make sure that everyone's on board with yeah there are going to be some bumps along the road and so yeah if you have you know if you're running up against like Black Friday or e-commerce periods like all right maybe we 
pause and you know don't do it during that period but you know if you have a put slow time it's like all right let's focus on nailing this during our slow period um, so that's yeah that sit time has been like a good just framing that mentality ahead of time is good to do cool well thank you so much for your insights and uh yeah thank you for joining us today like it's very helpful happy to all right, and then from there, Lily's going to help us get started. So, if you're considering server-side GTM, uh, what, what what do we do? Yeah, so like um, Vinny was speaking to you at the very end, right? There are many considerations before deciding to even start with server-side tagging. Um, what we have here is kind of a list of foundational questions to ask your team before um, kind of considering and making all of the moves to server-side GTM. Um, and the first one is, do you have a solid client-side tagging setup supported by like that solid data layer implementation, right? Because the data is still being collected and sent from your site. The only difference for server-side tagging is how you are sending that data and where. So you will still need that solid um, kind of implementation foundation before moving forward. Um, the second one, right, and we've talked about it a lot, right, do you have the necessary resources to pay for the cloud technology costs associated with server-side, as well as the resources to support that infrastructure management, data collection, and just instance opt optimization? So the infrastructure and development costs, um, does that make sense for your team at this time, or is it kind of a wait and hold until there's more vendor adoption? We're, but whatnot. And then the third is, have you seriously considered the reasons for moving to server side, right? Referring back to the use cases that Brian presented at the beginning, measurement, um, durability, site speed, data enrichment. Um, are you moving to server side to kind of improve site performance? Are there privacy concerns? Do you just want kind of more ownership or control of your data? Um, and so those are all kind of reasons to consider before moving um, to server-side GTM. And then the last one, right, is have you communicated to your end user about the privacy and transparency of their data? So it's always important to remember you still have to remain compliant and respect your end user's consent for data collection. And server-side GTM is not a way to circumvent that, is to help kind of um, make data collection a lot more ease and sustainable for you. Um, while still respecting the end user's consent. So an implementation is not, not fully supported can end up costing more in the long run because the leap to server-side GTM requires much more intention than that of just a regular kind of web implementation. It's really critical to have these key conversations before beginning the work to move to server-side GTM. Great, and then Brian, are you gonna walk us through kind of the next steps on how to get started? Yeah, so how can you get started with SGTM? So getting started will require a little bit more of a technical setup, as you kind of heard, there's some servers involved in this. So again, depending on what cloud platform you have, some you know people prefer different cloud platforms, there is a way to configure them in pretty much all of them. Um, some might have different challenges, but there is definitely a bit of a more technical setup. Uh, with the cloud environment. Typically here at AdServe, we're, we're using Google Cloud Platform. We primarily set up on Cloud Run and kind of look at the load balancing and kind of understand a person's uh, or, or, or a company's traffic before uh, we, we know how many instances to kind of scale to. But this can be everywhere. We also have people who are putting this on AWS or uh, elsewhere. So uh, the yeah, the, basically the first steps are uh, if uh, you are interested, contact us. Otherwise, check out some of our blogs, which I think uh, we'll put in there. Um, basically, just to check out, yeah, making the move to server-side uh, tagging blog series. We kind of did this. They're probably older, but I think they're evergreen because it kind of came out uh, initially when server-side was pretty new. So there may be some stuff that's changed, but most likely they're evergreen and the, the reasons are still there. Uh, review the SGTM opportunities, benefits, and challenges with your internal team. Determine if server-side GTM is the right tool for you. Uh, you definitely don't have to use it, but it can definitely help you for some of the durability and some of the other uh, positive changes that we've mentioned earlier. Uh, and then, yeah, connect with AdServe. Uh, we specifically really are diving into this. We understand it, and we support many uh, clients already that are using this. So 
We can help you develop your own tagging infrastructure. We can help you do the audit, uh, everything, and then set up that infrastructure. So we have the cloud expertise too. So um, we'd love to, to, to have you. And, and then thank you. And we'll now open up for kind of a Q and A question period. And maybe we'll get to some of the questions that have already been answered as well. And we can kind of say them out loud. So yeah. feel free to answer, put some questions in there. Um, I think the first one from the beginning um, was, I think, what was it? Um, what will service ITTM's response be to the most recent commit to WebKit project where Safari will apply the seven day expiration for first party cookies to HTTP requests from third party IP addresses? Um, so Adam, I think we'll defer that for you, um, if you have any insights there. Yeah, yeah, it's a good question. Uh, I'll preface this by saying like, we find out about these things at the same time as everyone else. So uh, we're still digesting and, and figuring out the exact implications. Uh, the general sense, though, is that what they're trying to do is stop third parties from cloaking themselves as first parties. And that isn't what SGTM is trying to do. We're, we're focused on first party measurement, uh, mm -hmm. but I think there might be some, some exposure to this regardless. And so one of the things we want to, to look into is exactly how uh, this impacts SGTM functionality. And then also what are the ways we could help you mitigate it? Anything we need to do to change in the product or how you deploy still very early given this was just announced um, this week but we'll have more to say uh, in the coming weeks on this topic so thanks for asking the question okay great um and then the next one um what resources are available for an organization wanting to learn how to implement server-side gtm um, if there's any kind of official course offerings that we're aware of you know Brian, we kind of, um, I think a first start would be those two blog posts from um, Adsworth, right? Those are two good starting point, points. And then, of course, CMOS course on server side GTM. Adam, is there any other official course that you would recommend reviewing? Um, no, no, I, I think those are great places to start. We are trying to publish more documentation ourselves and some like getting started guides, but I think one of the strengths of GTM in general and now SGTM is that there's this like, because it's free and open, sort of this open playground, there are a lot of people working on it and learning and developing their own perspective on things. And so this broader ecosystem of thought leaders is a great thing to have. And so having folks like Brian and you, Lily, um, creating this content, uh, I think, gives a lot of options for people to learn more. That's great. Um, and then does server-side GTM work in a cross-domain tracking scenario with a third-party domain partner site? Brian, that might be a you question. <laughs> yeah, I believe so. So there is a thing with the FPID um, you have, uh, that is a server only set cookie, but there is a th another cookie that's a JavaScript set cookie that's hashed from that called an FPLC cookie, which is like the linker cookie. So I believe that what you could do is you can, um, and I think there, I'd have to look into this further and get back, but uh, you you can pass that cookie or get that value and pass that uh, to, to your third party domain um, in that. But, it, but you should likely own your domains, I guess. Like, I don't know, the question of is a third party domain partner site. Um, mm -hmm. Usually we recommend clients like, they, it's like they have their own, they're owning both, but they just have two separate domains. So again, part of this isn't with like sharing data with other third parties, but if you have maybe ownership and the, your, your, your users are aware of the consent of this, then I would definitely look into that first. But I believe it's possible with that FPLC cookie. Uh, it, like I said, it's a hashed version of the FPID. Okay. Um, what are the pros? 
I think we're reading the same one, Brian. Are there any pros and cons of using the uh, measurement API with server side? Yeah. Um, my understanding, and maybe this is a G4 thing with measurement API or measurement protocol that I'm not sure if you can start a session on it. I uh, defer to maybe some other people that maybe if you know, but initially it was used to add, add additional data to a session that already began. Uh, so I, I don't have an update on that right now, but that could be a consideration there is that you may not be able to start a session or initiate a session uh, with measurement protocol, but I think that's not unique to server-side GTM. Um, pros and cons uh, would basically be that. I, I think if you can't start a session and you're just kind of adding data to your already uh, started session, then that would be, you need to have something to initiate it. So we can... I don't, know, I don't know we can follow up on that but good question yeah i think it depends on which measurement api you're talking about as well mm -hmm. like, brian everything you said about measurement protocol is true um but if you know there's the enhanced convergence measurement api offline conversion import api etc so lots of pros and cons across all of those um great um okay so with the enhanced speed, and I'm assuming this is referring to kind of page performance, um, will this also have a positive impact on ranking in Google search results? So Adam, I'm gonna defer to you on that one, if you have any insights there. Yeah, I don't wanna speak out of turn, um, because I, I don't know what the official answer is there. My assumption is yes. Um, because it, it should improve page speed and uh, lighthouse scores and so on. But I uh, take that with a grain of salt, knowing that I, I don't speak on behalf of Google search here. Yeah, perfect. Um, the, are you saying WebGTM will never support G4 signals? Um, I'm pretty sure that does support signals, right? Or is it does not? Yeah, I'm saying we will support signals uh likely march or april of next year for server side gtm right for server side gtm oh and uh web gtm if you're if you're deploying ga4 via web gtm today google signals already works yeah okay awesome right. that was my understanding as well um i think those are all of our questions that i see most of them have been answered by our lovely ad swervians that are on the call um is there any other kind of last minute questions that anyone wants to drop into the questions box Brian, do you see a new question? Sorry, I have was one that just popped in. I have a vendor. I want us to implement SGTM. Work with Facebook conversion API. I'm not sure why nine subdomains would need to be created. Um, I'd need to hear more understanding there. We we simply have one subdomain created for our server side GTM instance. So I, um, I'm not sure, that's typically what we do. Uh, we do have another, uh, one client that we have is like does have multiple domains, but just two, and you can actually use the same server-side GTM instance with two, two different subdomains, which is really cool. Um, but yeah, and then you can just choose it in the preview, which one you're previewing, but I, I'm not sure the, the nine subdomains with the rationale is there. You, you don't need multiple. Um, I think the questions are tapering out. Oh, yeah, that seems a bit much. Yeah, <laughs> if you want to I mean, follow up with us, uh, we can definitely help you out and get you in the right direction. Great. Well, thanks everybody uh, for joining today. Thank you, Brian, Lily, Adam, and uh, Vincent. Uh, we really appreciate the fabulous content today. Uh, just a reminder, uh, we will be sending out the recording uh, via email and it will also be posted to our YouTube channel. Uh, give us just like 24 hours or so just to um, get that recording um, all wrapped up. 
um, and uh, be on the lookout for probably sometime tomorrow morning. So uh, thank you for joining today. Uh, be on the lookout for another webinar coming up soon for, for AdSwerve. Um, we'll be promoting that on our social channels and via email to our clients. So thanks a lot, everybody. Great, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>